Hallelujah. I'm so happy uh, that uh, the Lord has given once again an opportunity to share from His precious word. And um, last time when I shared, I shared from uh, the topic, Fear Not. And today I want to, uh, I, I think uh, it uh, may be uh, felt like I glorified fear in the first part, but in the second part, we are just going to crush fear, okay? Yeah. Uh, so today we are going to just truly figure out uh, what the scripture talks about, uh, how to handle fear, and what are some of the things that we can also practically do to uh, overcome fear. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you. We want to praise you. Praise you. Yes. Daddy, this is your house. This is your home. We once again welcome you. It is you we want to minister in the session. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I sense the name Veena and I believe, I believe the Lord uh, is going to... Um, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. I sense your name and uh, I believe that the Lord, the Lord wants to uh, say that He has you in His mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I sense that the Lord is... Uh, releasing a new measure of faith into your life today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There is a mountain that the Lord has kept for you. And I believe as you possess that first in faith, I believe the Lord, the Lord will open doors, the Lord will arrange some people, uh, the Lord will set a crew, uh, the, Lord, the, Lord will, the Lord will reveal His plan and He will also bring it to pass. I sense the verse Psalm 37, 5, I believe for you, that commit your plans unto the Lord and trust only in Him and He shall bring it to pass. Father, we want to commit this time unto you, Daddy. Have your way in our midst. Today as we are uh, learning about uh, overcoming fear, Holy Spirit, I pray, I pray that you will minister to each person and that you will not only crush their fears, but you will teach them, and equip them to overcome and equip them, overcome their fears. And they will not only overcome their fears, but they will teach many others how to how to just get over the fear and fulfill the plans of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. We want to give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I would like to quickly do a recap because if I don't quickly do it, then this recap will be today's message as well. Yeah? So uh, I want to encourage those who missed uh, part one to just go to YouTube and quickly um, uh, do that, not now, but after some time, after the service. But uh, let me do, uh, just do a quick um, recap so that we'll have a base from which we'll go to part two. So Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 talks about then the dust. I'm going to, I'm going to go express speed uh, about the recap, uh, but uh, today's topic, we'll dwell on it, we'll chew on it, and we'll crush the fears, okay? So um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 says, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. I want to establish this truth here that we all are from God. We are not a result of any atomic explosion or Big Bang or anything, but the Lord, we were with God and the Lord has sent us here. And the Bible says our days are numbered. Yeah, Psalm 90 verse 12 says, that so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. A lot of people, when they go through challenges, when they go through fear, they think, oh, this is just a torment. This is a time wherein I just want to somehow figure out how to pass by. Now, I want you to know that this is a precious opportunity that God has given us. Because we were with God. And as we walk with God, we will be with Him eternity. And now is a short period that the Lord has positioned us in this earth. For what? I want you to know this is a precious opportunity. Can you tell to your neighbor, this is a great chance. <coughs> a great chance for what? A great chance to once again honor God. 
Hallelujah. A great chance to take great choices for God. A great chance to show to people around, to talk to yourself and even to tell God, God, you matter to me. Hallelujah. The most important thing in my life is you, Lord. I am not behind a particular job. I am not behind money. I am not behind my marriage. I am not behind my children. But Lord, all these are precious to me because it is you who has given me to steward them. Hallelujah. So this is a precious opportunity. And this, these, number, these days we have, it's numbered. A time in earth is limited edition. And it's the Lord's desire that we will convert that limited edition to an eternal edition. Hallelujah. 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 And the Bible says, because now he has sent us here, he didn't send us like, uh, okay, somehow let him be there. No, no, no. The Bible says in, uh, in Psalm 139 verse 14, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, this is too difficult for people sometimes to appreciate. If we have a low self-esteem, we even not dare to read it properly. Because the moment we say, I am wonderful, I am a creation of God, I am precious, the low self-esteem will start to kick in and say, you are wrong. I want you to know that actually whatever we feel, the scripture is supreme and final. The Bible says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And the psalmist says, I know that. That's why I'm praising him. Can we look at the mirror sometime and say, wow, thank you, Jesus. Now that's the contemporary version of this verse. See, when the psalmist wrote that time, actually he is now liturgically writing in a different way. Now we, we speak in the cool version today. Yeah? We look at the mirror, yo, cool, thank you, Jesus. Yeah? Some people do, whatever. Be so happy that the Lord created you precious, marvelous, and you are a wonder of God. Each one of us are a wonder of God, sent to this earth for a very, very, very specific plan and a purpose. And that's not an ordinary plan. The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Good works. There is a plan for us. It is a plan having a lot of good works. And we don't have to arrange it. The Bible says, God prepared it beforehand that we should walk in him. We don't have to arrange all the scenario and set up. We just need to walk in it. He has already created. Hallelujah. Can you speak to your neighbor that we have a track set by God? And what God has for his beloved is something precious. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 says, But it is written, I has not seen, ears have not heard, nor have entered into the heart of any man. Which, is, which, which means it's the latest edition, yeah? unboxed plan, a unique plan and purpose for each one of us. And that is why the Lord has created us unique. Hallelujah. And I think one of the dangerous or most subtle way of killing the, the Lord's plan in our life is by comparing us with others. You not only appreciate them, sorry, you don't even appreciate them and you also don't appreciate yourself. And you're upset with God. Can you tell your neighbor, sorry, I have a separate track. I can partner with you. I can help you. Now, I, 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 I see so many other discussions happening. I didn't mean any of that. I just meant... Husband and wives, you have one track only. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't mean that. 
What I intended to say was that the Lord has a specific plan for us. We can definitely partner according to our roles and responsibilities in different spheres, okay? Jesus, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will minister exactly according to each one's need. <laughs> yeah? So, so God has a unique plan for each one of us. Unique plan. And, and He's a God who wants to make us successful. And I'm sure that if you are a parent, you will know there is such a joy to see your children prospering, doing good, doing well. Sometimes I, I, I just feel like um, uh, when it's a new year, new academic year, or when it's time for exam, yeah, parents will bring the children, Pastor Prarthika, and he is coming like, He doesn't want prayer for uh, exam. He doesn't want any mark. But the parent, that's the heart of the father. That's the heart of the parents. To see every blessing in their children. Hallelujah. And the Lord has a very, very, very specific plan for us. And I want you to know it is not difficult to know the plans of God. All you need to know is to know how to be spiritual, to tap into the Holy Spirit. And today I pray that you will know Holy Spirit in a deeper, deeper, deeper measure. And I thank God for the prayer times that we have in the evenings and in the mornings and all the time. Yeah, I praise God for that. And I pray that through all these things that you will know the Holy Spirit in a deeper, deeper, deeper measure. Because the moment we know the Holy Spirit, and, and probably till then, you probably would have received a word from the pastor, or the prophet, or from the word. And now the Holy Spirit is alive in you, and you sense the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Such a joy and adventure in that faith life. You will start to see your authentic Christian life blossoming when you start to walk with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to, 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 to desire more for the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Bible says that no eyes have heard, no ears have, sorry, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no heart is conceived, but it is released in the Spirit. Which means I truly conclude from this verse that only a, a, a Holy Spirit filled or somebody who knows how to just walk with the Holy Spirit can be an effective Christian, can only be an effective Christian. Only he will be able to fulfill the plans of God. Why? Because it is released only in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Desire for the Holy Spirit. Desire for the Holy Spirit. If there is anybody who is here truly, truly desiring for the voice of God. Daddy, I want to hear you. I want to just, I, I truly want to know what it means to be led by the Holy Spirit. I remember at one point of my faith life, this was my cry. Holy Spirit, I have read this, this verse a, a, a lot of times. Oh, Romans 8.15. Those who are led, no, Romans 8.14, I think, those who are led by the Holy Spirit are the children of God. Daddy, I want to, I want that to be true in my life. I want that to be true in my life. Holy Spirit, will you lead me? I remember so many times praying, and today I, I want you to know that actually I'm so blessed by the voice of God. I want you to break every lie, agree and break every lie that it is difficult. God is so powerful. God is so supreme that He knows how to make Himself audible to you. He knows if He can figure out all the things from Genesis to Revelation and then in eternity, I want you to believe that He knows how to communicate to me. Hallelujah. Father, I want to pray, Lord, if there is anybody here, if there is anybody here longing, longing to hear the voice of God, Holy Spirit, I pray, won't you speak to them? 
will you speak to them will you speak to them let them have the joy of hearing the father let them have the joy of hearing the father i'm so sorry if if in your earthly life you had a difficult father who wouldn't speak to you or who didn't care for you who despised you who abused you or oh, that narrative has been so strong in your mind i pray that the holy spirit with his love and power will break that narrative and will infuse this truth that you have a loving 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 unconditionally loving heavenly father hallelujah i pray i pray holy spirit let this truth flow into their mind and right now i pray for a release of heavenly love into their hearts through the holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah i pray daddy for everyone who who deeply longs for an acceptance i pray that you let them know that they are already accepted by the father hallelujah hallelujah how much ever rejection they have gone through i pray that you right now let them be so sure in their innermost being that they are accepted by the almighty god hallelujah thank you lord thank you daddy hallelujah hallelujah i truly believe i truly believe that, that you will that you will you will you will just enjoy it. just don't limit it to hearing or you, I, i truly believe you will start to enjoy the relationship with the father hallelujah some of you i believe will start start sensing the things of god through images i believe i believe that the that the lord is asking some of you to uh, take your paint brush and as you draw you will you will feel loved by the holy spirit hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord let's get into what it means fear we spoke about uh, fear as an unpleasant emotion caused by a threat of danger harm or pain so the moment we feel we feel fear the fear is talking to you is something is going to be in trouble you're going to have an issue or your family is going to have an issue your job is going to have an issue fear is speaking that there is a threat there is a danger coming your way there is a pain coming your way something uncomfortable is going to happen and we fear that often and it affects different realms of our life last time we saw that we are a tripartite being according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 that we have a spirit that uh, or, or i am a spirit i have a soul and i live in a body we are a tripartite being all these areas get affected if we don't know how to overcome fear in mind we feel sometimes paralyzed overwhelmed stuck emotions are affected majorly being hopeless and depressed our will the ability for volition or discretion or i would say taking decisions is heavily influenced and then we take wrong decisions in in my small experience in counseling or even in my personal life i understand that some of the people that i have uh, spoken to they are not wicked people but w- they have messed up because of because of the 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 reason that they didn't know how to respond to that uncomfortable situation that was prevailing within them they don't know how to handle this fear it affects our will it affects it takes a toll on our body insomnia is a common result that i'm not able to sleep indigestion is a symptom and for men i think it's such a killer indigestion and no sleep are two main things yeah it affects big time 
for a lot of people actually their heart rate goes up it affects in different areas of our life and that's why it is important for us to know that we need to learn to overcome fear many times we just make a prayer and we get a peace and and we just think it's done i believe if every area is affected i believe we need to cater to all these areas in our life fear distorts our identity when all these areas are affected in our life it just makes us a totally different person i remember a time where an I was so irritated, so angry, so upset, so disappointed. It was kind of a one of a kind thing. And for some reason I came to church on that day here in a bike. And I was so upset. I was so scared that when this work is going to be over, oh what is the situation? I just took my bike and I just sped and that was high speed. yeah and fear distorted my identity in such a way that i was enjoying swaying the bike like this like some of the young guys because until then when those young guys do that i used to ask what is these guys problem yeah and i was doing like this and then i reached pardipara i mean the stop before panavila and i just do a stylish this thing and then i went to desi kappa and i said take one royal faluda oh my anger my fear is not over three scoops ice cream i just finished as if i haven't seen ice cream for years i don't know what all those college students there and the shop owner the i'm just eating yeah i want you to know that i don't enjoy bike riding i want you to know that actually i don't have a sweet tooth sweet tooth Yeah? fear if we don't handle it will just change us it will just change our identity fear the acronym is mostly used like false evidence appearing real yeah devil is very crafty he's not a fool he is not asking us to believe without showing anything he is a master of counterfeit that's why he shows as if there is an evidence and that will appear real to us because that has become our meditation oh i just saw that news eh? or somebody till now he didn't contact today he contacted ah, i heard your company q2 results not great oh i'm losing my job i'm losing my job started that that trigger and that chain started i'm losing my job yeah and if i lose my job then what will happen to my emi and then what will happen to my children's fees and then immediately visions and dreams started happening my child is standing outside the class crying daddy daddy yeah this is called thought racing based on the trigger this is just racing and racing and racing and it is trying to paralyze us because we made that thought or that trigger our meditation another acronym for a funny one for fear is forget everything and run yeah because because fear is not just a spiritual aspect when we are scared there is something called epinephrine or commonly known as adrenaline being released in our body that chemical is not a believer <laughs> it knows only three things fight flight or if i'm not able to do both freeze that's why this acronym forget everything and run and this fear comes with its twin brother often buy one get one free yeah and his name is worry why i call identical twins because we sometimes are not able to discern who is who am i worrying or am i scared pastor i'm pedi illa pasha solpam bhayam we don't know the bible says we need to have some good fears what are those one is the fear of the lord because the fear of the lord brings wisdom 
Amen? Wisdom in a way wherein it gives us the ability to overcome certain logic or override certain logic when required and sometimes to choose logic when required. For example, now fear of the Lord is important. The second thing is the normal fear that we have. For example, I am standing uh, uh, at a construction site in an apartment in the 15th floor and I see here there is a small rail and it is very low. And because of the wisdom that God has given, based on the knowledge that I have, I am taking a two steps backside so that I'll be safe. That's absolutely fine. Yeah? When you're navigating a curve, you're keeping your uh, uh, leg on the brake pedal. Because of your experience, because of the rational that the Lord has allowed you to develop, it is very important. You're not giving sharp objects to a toddler because you know from the experience, from the wisdom that God has allowed you to learn that he may hurt himself. It's very important. Why these fears are good? These fears are good because these fears help you to fulfill the plans of God. What we need to overcome are the fears that prevents us from fulfilling the plans of God. But there are sometimes our children have fear for vaccination. That's when we say, it's okay, it's okay, it's good. It's good. One ice cream, Paul's creamery, two ice cream. Yeah? We negotiate. <laughs> he liked it. We negotiate. <laughs> we negotiate and uh, we, we, we just help them to appreciate the benefit of going through the, uh, through the pain. There are times when, when God speaks to us supernaturally. We need to learn to keep away our logic. When Peter was asked to walk, yeah, Peter didn't talk about gravity to Jesus. I thank God he didn't study physics probably, I don't know. Yeah, there are times wherein when the Lord allows discipline into our life, we need to embrace it and not to stand away because it is painful. The Bible says in, um, in John chapter 15 verse 2, I believe, where he says that if you bear fruit, I'm going to prune you. So that you will bear much and more fruit. Hallelujah. There are some good pains that the Lord will allow, which we need to allow ourselves beautifully in the hands of God. Hallelujah. How to overcome fear. We are getting into today's topic. Yeah? How to overcome fear. Somebody is looking at the watch. I have no plan to uh, stop on time. Yeah? If you have time to come in the evening, I want you to listen to me fully. <laughs> yeah. So how to overcome fear? The first thing that I want you to understand is, let's close our eyes and let's do a quick exercise. Yeah? Close your eyes and in this 10 seconds, only 10 seconds, I'm not going to pray. Only 10 seconds. The only thing that you need to do is, you shouldn't think about, close your eyes and the only thing that you need to do is you shouldn't think about your worst fear. You should not think about your fears or something that's bothering you. I have only five more seconds. Just don't think about your fear. Somebody already started laughing. Yeah? And this is just an exercise, thank you. This is just an exercise for you to understand that you cannot neglect thinking about fear and get away with your life. Because these fears are really bothering in your life. And the, the way or the strategy that we have to take to overcome fear is not to neglect, is not to evade, not to negotiate, but to face them. Hallelujah. The Lord has not called us to be slaves of fear, but the Lord has called us to overcome fear. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about three things. But before that, always remember the example of David. When he had a small flock, his challenges were a lion and a bear. He faced it, which prepared him with confidence for the next exploit, that is Goliath. 
was a big one. For me, Goliath was not a battle for David, but I believe Goliath was a setup from God for David so that he can ascend. Hallelujah. Goliath for, for David, I believe from God, it was a, just set up for his promotion, for a greater visibility. Till then, nobody knew him. I want you to know if you are ready to face your fears, the Lord has his own beautiful ways of honoring you and lifting your head. Hallelujah. I truly like the way God chose David. When he was despised by people, neglected by his own. Where the Lord speaks through Samuel and say, that, Let him come from the field, until then we will not sit. The Lord knows how to honor his people. Hallelujah. The moment we are ready to face the fears, the Lord, I would, I would say the Lord wants such people in high places. Who will not bow down to fear at the next and the next levels. There is a very famous saying which says that every level there is a new devil. Yeah? People who are adventurous, they would say amen to that. But people who want a safe, comfortable life, our pastor, we will just settle with this level. I believe the Lord has given his life for us. I believe till the last breath of our life, we have to keep blessing the kingdom and keep advancing the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think one of the crucial turning point in facing fear is agreeing to the truth that I don't want to die daily to fear. Even in the military, they say there is only one death for the brave. But the coward dies daily. We can die daily to Jesus Christ, it's okay. But I think we need to say that I don't want to die to my fears daily. I'm going to face it because fear cripples us. I want to talk about three D's. Three D's, three Ideala, three D's to overcome fear. And the first is discern. First is discern. When you are fearful, I want you to know that whether you are a believer or a pastor or whoever it is, it is okay to say that I am feeling uncomfortable. Some people have some kind of a challenge saying that I will not say pastor that I am fearful. My testimony will be affected. I want you to know that actually your testimony is already affected because you are now becoming a hypocrite. Because we are not coming as perfect children to the perfect father. We are coming, to, coming as adopted children to the father. Hallelujah. We can be as who we are in his presence. And it is his job. And as we walk with him, he will perfect us. Hallelujah. I want you to know that when we name it, we can tame it. When you say, I'm fearful, because I'm going to show from the scripture. It is okay to say that I'm scared. This is bothering me. This is taking my peace. Psalm 56, 1 and 2. Talks about the psalmist whom we celebrate as the man who's... Uh, whose, whose, whose heart is knitted with God. And he says in the first and second verse, Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me. It is okay to say, Lord, I am scared. Take it in the presence of God. Discern what you are feeling. Also understand that it is not from God. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For we are not given the spirit of fear. The spirit that is given to us is a spirit of love, power and a sound mind. You just heard how I behaved without a sound mind when I was scared. When we allow fear into our lives, 
We go low in our love, in our power, and in our sound mind. Fear distorts our identity. Fear doesn't belong to us. It is foreign. And when you learn about transplant, organ transplant, yeah? When the body, even our body is beautifully designed in such a way that it will resist anything that is foreign. Yeah? That is one of the challenges that we see while organ transplant happens. Anything that is foreign, we should know we have to resist. Fear is not from God. Romans 8.15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. We have not received the spirit of fear. We have not received anything that tries to make us under bondage. But we have received the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which cries out, not Jesus or not Lord, but Abba, Father. And I believe that is a very, very, very powerful, not just word, but a prayer. A prayer that includes everything. I was sharing in the Malayalam service that I know how my children calls me at what tone, what everything is in that one word. Sometimes when they call, Abba, by that time, I'll just be ready with my Iron Man suit. I know that there is some cockroach or some flies that is happening or running around or flying around that place. They did not pray. I'm running to the scene. And my first response is not asking, did you pray in the name of the Father or the Son of the Holy Spirit? My first response is, I just hold my two children back and I'm ready for action. I'm taking it on. Now the battle belongs to me. Now the battle belongs to me. I want you to believe in the power of this simple prayer. In that one word, if you dare to believe in that one word, Abba Father, He knows my tone. He knows everything that I'm going through. He knows the intensity of the pain that I'm going through. He will not mock me thinking that, hey, I'm just scared about a cockroach. He cares about my mind and the emotions that I go through. Hallelujah. Can you just tell your neighbor, we have such a loving heavenly father. Probably sometimes people would have mocked you. But I want you to know that your fear, the conditions of your heart is very precious to your daddy. He cares for your emotional health. He cares about how you feel. It is so precious for him. And that is why I want you to rely on him and call him. You might be thinking, I don't know, I'm a new believer. I don't know how to pray. You don't have to pray. You learn prayer by the time you grow in that. But you learn to call him Abba, Father, Papa, Daddy. Because when your heart is broken, words are less. And you go through extreme difficulty. You don't even know what you are going through. Now how can you share to other person? And I know people might tell you, you need to learn to communicate. Because people need to know what you're going through. But I want you to know that we have a heavenly father. He is not only the high priest. He is our heavenly father who knows how to sympathize. And he knows not only to sympathize, but he is able and more than able to protect us and deliver us from our fears. Hallelujah. I believe truly in these simple prayers. Psalm 91.17 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, which means I am in His house, under the shadow of the Almighty. I just try to make it very homely, okay? 
uh, because I believe uh, the contemporary version is so casual and so, uh, you know, uh, not that spiritual because he's my father. I'm in his house and I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress, which means I know he is my daddy. I know that I am, I, I have to, uh, I'm trusting in him alone. And then this remaining scripture says, surely he shall deliver you. Then the next verse says, he shall cover you. And the next verse says, you shall not be afraid. And then the next verse says, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Even it's day and night match, you don't worry about that. Because you have a 24-hour non-sleeping God. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right side. But you can move from that place. No. It will not come near you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was one thing that I spoke to you about uh, in the last week about if you go through any fear, dare to call him in faith. Appa. Father. Appa. Appa, I want you to come. I want you to take over. Even if you don't know the will of God in that situation, it's okay. Leave it to him. Because he's your father. He knows everything. All you need to do is to call him. The second thing, the second D I want to talk about, D too, is distract. Because if you keep meditating on the fear, it will start bearing fruit. I was sharing an example. No heart patients have lived a long life by embracing junk food. You're not going to have a great faith life by meditating on your fear. You need to necessarily distract yourself. Why I'm saying distract? Because just like we exercise now, it is not easy to decide, I'm not going to think about my fear. It will keep coming. It will keep coming. You need to distract. And for some of you who knows how to uh, play volleyball, you know when the opponent keeps scoring, our coach says something like this. What is that? Time out. Yeah? We need to break the flow of the enemy. We need to break the flow of the opponent scoring. We need to break that fear from taking its fruits. Research says that when there is a feeling, there is a thought that is being generated. And based on the intensity of the thought, th thought, it starts to manifest in your body. I think last week I was speaking to some people who said, Pastor, when I go to closed spaces, I start to feel like choking. Somebody said, Pastor, when I'm in crowd, I feel like something crawling on me. Yeah? For those who experience that, I know it's very serious. For those who don't go through, it's funny. Yeah, but I want you to know that the Lord knows it. He will strengthen you and He will deliver you. Yeah. So research says there is one step of feeling, then thought, then body sensation, and the last thing is urge. What is urge? Just what I did. Till yesterday I knew it was wrong. But today, I don't care whether I have a wife and children. I don't care whether there will be tickets. I don't care whether there will be police. I don't care whether I will hurt my life. And there is an urge. Research says, this goes in a chain. And if you break its flow at least for six seconds, you will effectively break its flow. Okay? So that six seconds is often termed as moments of grace. So I want to encourage you, when you go through fear, just distract yourself. See, even the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, flee also from youthful lust. Yeah? The Bible is not saying that when you feel tempted, go and dance there and praise the Lord. No, 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 no. You flee from there. You disengage from that place. You distract yourself from that place. 
and then it talks about committing yourself to something. Now imagine that actually, if I didn't process my situation and I kept on doing the way I handle fear, one day it would have been very worse. Yeah? Or probably that shop would have been a hypermarket by now. Because every time I'm having Faluda. Yeah? Their business will increase. We need to learn how to manage. And the Bible beautifully says that Philippians 4, chapter 6, verse 7. Do not worry about anything. Now, you might be saying, Pastor, it's easy for you to say, but what about our bills? What about our EMI? What about... I, I know all these are reality, but I want you to know that there is a greater reality about a God who is a provider of all our needs. The only challenge is, when I give attention to something up close, I'll be able to see that only. See, Erin is sitting just in front of me, but I'm not able to see her. Because I have kept my fear. I've kept my fear just in front of me. Knowingly or unknowingly, I have zoomed it into the details. The Bible says he's a ever present helper, especially in times of trouble. The one who is so up close, I'm still not able to see him because I have kept a facade of that fear in front of me. We need to distract ourselves from fear so that we won't bear fruit from the fear. And the Bible says that, that be anxious about nothing but in everything by prayer. So the Bible is technically saying, if you are actually being worried, if there is a palpitation that you are talking about, if there is a sensation that you are talking about, just come to the room if you can, sit comfortably and see if you can pray. Why I am saying that, see if you can pray? From my experience talking to people, I want you to know that not all are able to pray. It depends on the intensity of what they go through. See if you can pray because when you pray, the Bible says, when you pray, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through Jesus Christ. It is a two-fold healing that the Lord gives when we allow ourselves in the presence of God. Because when only one place is healed, it will slowly start to flow to the other place and it will again corrupt the other place. When we sit in the presence of the Lord, the Lord will help us to understand that we are never alone. I like this quote by Brother Ravi Zacharias. He said, the more you are alone with God, you will always know that you are never alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 56 verse 3. So we spoke about the first two verses from David saying that I am so scared. And then I would say he knows how to take the right way of handling fear. He says in Psalm 56 3, whenever I am afraid. Which means... This is a normal thing for him. It's okay. His testimony is still uptight. Guys, he's still the anointed. He's still the man after the Lord's heart. He says, whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. And then few verses, he talks about something towards the end in 9 and 11. So here it says, whenever I'm afraid, I will. He is talking about a decision that he is planning to take. I will. English class, future tense. Yeah? And in the ninth and 11th verse, he says, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. This, who knows? My pastor knows, no, 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 no. My prophet knows, no. This, I know my God is for me. 
Hallelujah. It is important when we go through fear and worry and anxiety and stress issues that we allow ourselves to be in the presence of God and that we know that He is for me. And I want you to know that actually if you know Him as a father, He will spend His last coin for you. And if you have read the scripture, you know that everything belongs to Him. He is not going to run out of money. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But some are not able to pray. Some, when they go through extreme thought racing, they are not able to pray. I want to just quickly give you a couple of practical advices. You can read scripture loudly. Distract yourself with the avoid faluda, junk food, binge eating, binge watching. Uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, yeah, these things generally, if you don't look the right page, will help you to be more and more terrible. Yeah, so read scripture loudly if that will help you to distract yourselves. You can meditate on a particular verse. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, which talks about the, or check Google verses to help. Fear. Read it. Try to internalize it. Try to believe it. Worship is a phenomenal way to plug into the presence of God. Pick up that instrument that you have. Whether you have scale or pitch or what, doesn't matter. You enjoy. You enjoy. And it's so beautiful that Psalm 56 is called the Miktam of David. Miktam of David. The meaning of Miktam is golden. And then after that, it is mentioned, this he wrote when he was captured by the Philistines. I want you to know that the Lord will use some of our fears to bring out that Miktams in your life. Do not fear, fear anymore. Because some of those things, if we need to know that the Lord is a mighty deliverer, we need to be captured. Hallelujah. Take that time to, or probably you don't, you don't have that strength anymore to minister or worship. Put a song and join along. Praying in tongues. 1, 14, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, and my understanding is unfruitful. That is what we want at this point. When the thoughts are racing according to the fear that is put in my mind, I want my mind to be unfruitful. Operate in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Edify yourselves. Hallelujah. Research proves that any rhythmic activity that you do helps you to be distracted from fear. I really like research these days because whether you search or research, you will only see what the truths that the Lord has established. Hallelujah. And the third point, and I'm then closing. So D1 was about discerning the fear, acknowledging and trusting in God. D2 was about distracting yourself so that you won't bear the fruit of fear. D3 is to know our design. And I, that I, I'm a child of God. We are children of God. Our design is not to fear and be slaves. That was past. That is done with. Today, I'm a child of God. And I want to release this scriptural portion over the church. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 onwards. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along, along in the boat as he was. All of you have received Jesus listening or trusting or obeying in his voice or word. If he says, let's go to the other side, he will ensure we reach the other side. 
no matter what storm comes the way no matter what happens in the way if we can know one secret to call abba father and to hold on to him he knows the route the next verse here says and other little boats also were with him probably in our previous phase there were other fellow believers to journey with who were strength and support to us but suddenly i feel like alone how will i journey how will i overcome this phase that i am going through even if he is sleeping so i relate that portion with what timothy keller said that the only person who has the privilege to wake up a king at 3 am in the morning and ask for a glass of water is his son we have that kind of access with god we can ask anything and everything to him i want you to know that he will not judge you he will not mock you he will not reject you if you have trusted in the word of god if you have put your faith in jesus he is faithful and able to bring you to the other side because the word released over you is that let's go to the other side even when there is storm are you willing to be in the boat yes he may discipline us for that little faith it's okay because he is appa is our father 1 john 4:4 says about our design that the one in us is greater than the one outside so it has to be a decision i will not fear any more just like david said in psalm 56 verse 11 I have put my trust in the Lord and I will not fear any more. Hallelujah. I just felt like showing two images to you. One is about a situation. A trouble situation. Joshua, can you show that image? If you are able to identify maybe in the scripture it was a boat maybe it is the contemporary version i just use this because i strongly sense that from the spirit to share this if you think this is where you are others nobody sometimes we have lot of people around we have all the resources but yet our feelings deceive that we don't have anybody i don't have anything nobody understands me there is no hope see it's a vast ocean it's a big sea in fact and i'm the only one probably you are the only one and it just looks like it's a matter of time that you will sink sometimes our feelings make us believe this whether our feelings are right or wrong i want you to know that that is the reality that we feel and christ is concerned about how we feel and our reality i've been also in a place like this where i felt things really difficult i thought it's over 
but i thank god for that time because in mark chapter 4 when they are out of the storm the disciples were astonished asking even the winds and storm obey him who is he they came out of that situation with a newer and a stronger and a powerful and a wonderful revelation about the one who is in the boat and i pray that the lord will reveal to you if you are in such a place in the midst of your fear the one who is stronger to ascend over any storm he will manifest in the middle of your fear for me when i felt like this i think i thought it was over but i was not thinking that was a miracle for me and that's when the next picture became so real to me that i am held in his hand hallelujah oh my hand is so small but there is a so strong loving thumb over my hand that's enough for my lifetime that's enough for my lifetime i want to truly help you to believe that his love is so much above all our theology so much more and above i want to speak over you that you will not sink i want to speak over you that you will come up stronger i want to pray over you that you will see god in a much more powerful way in the midst of your fears can we rise up and i want to pray over uh, you this verse philippians chapter 1 verse 6 that being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you good work in you, what the lord has begun in you is not a bad work it is a good work probably you may be facing a challenge in your family because you are standing for the lord he has begun a good work in you and i want to pray the scripture over you that he is able and faithful to bring it to completion until the day of the lord jesus christ father i want to pray daddy for all of us we want to thank you that you are an ever present help in times of trouble today i want to specially pray for those who are going through intense fear i pray right now the comfort of the holy spirit to minister to them to minister to them and right now show them show them signs of your presence in their lives hallelujah lord when they see you let every fear let every storm fade away in the majesty of your presence lord daddy i want to break every lie that has been framed by the enemy in all these minds and i pray the truth of god's word into their minds that they are accepted that all of us are accepted by the lord jesus christ unconditionally i sense in my spirit to tell you that he is the father to the fatherless He is the father to the fatherless i sense in my spirit to tell you that you don't have any more option to complain about the absence of the father because you have got the perfect one hallelujah thank you lord father we pray that as a church we will overcome these fears and all the days of our lives we will be faithful unto you honoring you in the best of our ability we ask your grace for that daddy in jesus precious name we pray amen amen, amen.